them. Okay, so before we get started, we're just going to take a second and introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Lauren Fleming. I am the Educator Community Manager here at Empatico. If you have been with Empatico for even just a little bit, you have probably received a numerous amount of emails from me. So I'm very happy to put a face to a name here with you all today. Um, David, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, of course. Lauren, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is David Hotler. I'm the community manager at Book Creator. Um, and I've been doing this role now for a little over a year. Uh, before that, I was teaching uh, here in Madrid, Spain at a private school and then uh, in the United States and Virginia as a photography high school teacher. So it's a pleasure to be here and I'm very excited. Awesome. Thank you, David. And Amanda, if you could introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Amanda Schaefer. Again, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I am a middle school environmental art teacher um, in Columbus, Ohio, and um, I teach a class called Art and Ecology. So it's a really cool class where we learn about advocacy and how to use art um, as a way to sort of look at using our voices and storytelling and um, looking at materials and how we can look at ways that we could be more sustainable. Awesome. Thank you both for taking a second to introduce yourselves. And for everybody else that is joining us here today, if you could take a moment and put in the chat, uh, let us know your name, where you are joining from, and what is the weather outside like today? Um, so I actually skipped over that. I am joining from Los Angeles, California in the United States. And it is, I honestly, it's it's been changing. Um, it is <laughs> cold by Los Angeles standards. Um, and I think it rained overnight. We've been getting, actually yesterday, we got some surprise rain and had the most beautiful rainbow in the evening yesterday. Um, so it just feels like there's a lot of uh, mother nature is mother naturing right now with the rainbow yesterday. And then um, we'll be fortunate enough to see part of the eclipse on Monday. So really excited. Um, David, if you want to let us know, what's the weather like outside? Yeah, Madrid is uh, in the grips of spring. So it's a beautiful sunny 70 degrees outside. It's a perfect day. Beautiful. And Amanda? Well, in Columbus, Ohio, United States, it is cloudy and 35 degrees. <laughs> So a little chilly still. We are just at the beginning of spring, so it'll be still probably a few more months before we get into like the warmer temperatures. Okay. And that's about, that's um, my point of reference is I know 32 degrees in Fahrenheit is zero degrees in Celsius. So you're close to freezing. <laughs> <laughs> it is freezing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I see we've got somebody joining us from Kuwait. There we go. Hello, hello. Um, Madrid. Oh, thank you, David. I'm now seeing you're checking for recording. Um, <laughs> we've also got somebody coming in from Croatia. It's sunny and beautiful. Ontario, slightly raining outside, but the snow is, the snow is melting. Um, Connecticut, chilly but sunny here. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you all. Feel free to keep saying hello in the chat, but we're going to keep moving forward. Um, today, we've got quite a few things to cover over the course of the next hour or so. Um, first, we're going to take a look at the empathy framework to guide our conversation for the next hour and throughout the Earth Day Challenge. Um, then Amanda and David and I are going to kind of talk through some things to get you all thinking about, you know, what is climate change? How do you have these conversations with your students before we jump into talking about the Earth Day Challenge? Um, then we will go over the Earth Day Challenge. I will take you to the platform, walk you through what the program looks like on the platform. Then we, if we've got enough time and enough people, we will send you all off into breakout rooms so that you can start building those connections um, and have somebody that you can connect with over the course of April. And then we'll finish up with some questions and answers at the, or some time for questions and answers at the end. Um, but to get us started, we wanted to take a few minutes to explore the empathy framework, like I said, to use as a guide during the next hour and throughout the Earth Day Challenge. For those of you that have not seen this before, this is our empathy framework. Um, empathy is a skill that allows us to feel what others are feeling, 
which is emotional empathy, understand what others think and feel, which is cognitive empathy, and act on those feelings and understandings, or behavioral empathy. It allows us to connect with others, develop a deeper understanding of the world at large, and act with compassion, all of which are crucial components to talking about and taking action towards addressing climate change, which is what we are, we're all here to talk about and engage with today. Um, research shows that there are three levels of application or interaction. We've got the intrapersonal or an empathetic relationship with oneself. We've got the interpersonal or an individual's relationship with other individuals. And we've got the intergroup or an individual's relationship with collectives or groups of people who are different from one's own group. What you're seeing here on the screen is a three by three grid with those three dimensions of empathy. So that emotional empathy, cognitive empathy and behavioral empathy and the three rings demonstrating those levels of interaction. So that inner circle, it represents connecting with oneself, that middle circle connecting with others and that outer circle connecting with the world at large along with nine key empathy building skills in total to practice with your students. These nine skills make up our empathy framework at Empatico. Um, in that inner, inner ring at the level of showing empathy and connecting with yourself, the skills that are highlighted there are mindfulness, self-awareness, and self-care. Practicing these skills allow us to stay grounded in the present moment, understand our own biases regarding the climate crisis, and express our emotions and needs. Again, all of these are crucial to engaging in the conversation about climate change. Um, in the middle ring at the level of connecting with each other, the skills that are highlighted there are emotion recognition, perspective taking and kindness. Practice, practicing these skills allows us to identify and acknowledge other individuals' emotions, imagine how someone else may see and experience the world and express concern for others. Then at the level of expressing and experiencing empathy with the world, so with the planet or with those outside of our direct community, the skills highlighted there in that outer ring are diplomacy, inclusivity, and collaboration. Practicing these skills allow us to be open and sensitive to different experiences, show curiosity by seeking other perspectives, and to show courage in problem solving. As we navigate today's conversation and the Earth Day challenge over the course of the next month, and then even beyond that, um, and you enter into conversations about the climate crisis, I encourage you all to continue to come back to the empathy framework and think about your strengths and your students' strengths and the skills that you're looking to build so that we can all come into this conversation and come into this conversation empathetically. Um, so to get us started, before we dive into the uh, conversation about the Earth Day Challenge, we just wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, what is climate change? How do you start the conversation with students? I'm going to get us started um, just with a general definition of climate change. This actually comes from the UN site on climate action. And the definition that I've got here is climate change refers to long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns. Such shifts can be natural due to changes in the sun's activity or large volcanic eruptions. But since the 1800s, human activities have been the main driver of climate change, primarily due to the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas. Um, you know, talking about climate change with your students can bring up a lot of feelings, including oftentimes anxiety. So it's really important for us to think about and be intentional about how we start this conversation with our students. Um, so I'd actually like to start by asking Amanda as one of our educators that is very active and actively having these conversations with your students. How did you start this conversation with your students? And you know, how did you know what would be the appropriate way to start that conversation? Um, well, you know, I usually start from a couple different angles. Um, usually most of the conversations are based on current current research. Mm -hmm. um, also like what is happening in the world. So I'll bring in actual articles and then we begin to dissect it and really look at the data and say, you know, where's the bias in this? What are the different perspectives? 
Um, another way, a lot of times I'll introduce some of these broader concepts is we will look at either like a work of art or a photograph. Um, and then we use um, Harvard Project Zero's um, See, Think, Wonder. Like, what do we see happening here um, where you're simply just describing, um, you know, what do we think the story is and um, what do we wonder about? And really letting students guide the conversation, mm -hmm. I think, is um, how we navigate some of these tougher, tougher parts and to begin to uh, break apart and dissect um, what is uh, you, you know, what what is our perspective as uh, Ohio Americans um, versus somebody else in a different part of the world. So we really begin to like really look at that um, and use uh, I use a lot of data to drive our conversations. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I love, I hear that you use data, but then also use other, other mediums like art as a way to explore these larger conversations. And that's how essentially, you know, we all came together because you were exploring these larger conversations using book creator, using art through that and connecting with classrooms outside of yours, outside of Ohio through Empatico. Um, and I'm wondering, David, if you've seen uh, book creator used or these these art tools at large to start these conversations, these larger conversations with students too. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Book creator is a very inclusive, accessible tool. We like to think we're the easiest way to create content online. Um, and mainly because of our interface and the way we've designed, uh, we can be used by age groups as low as pre-K and, and we've seen all the way through higher ed. And so through that platform, we've given voice to um, anyone who might have run into a barrier using another platform uh, to create a similar type of, of product like a book. Um, and so we enter into this, this story about climate change because we are that Space where any student has that equitable access to create their uh, their masterpiece and share their voice with the world. Um, and so I, I could share some examples, but Amanda has a thousand examples of, of students using these uh, using Book Creator to 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 share their voice. Um, and and you know to share a, a little on Amanda's point about you know, bringing in these real world examples and bringing in and, and what's happening in their community. Um, storytelling is one of the things that we see use Booker to use so much for. And I know Amanda's going to talk about that, but that really is the, the key here is that we're such an easy way to tell your story. And storytelling is such a great way to connect the community to your curriculum and to bring in those real world examples and then to give an authentic voice and platform to your students. So mm -hmm. kind of roundabout way to answer <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you. And I'm actually wondering, Amanda, when you started talking about climate change with your students, what what was their reaction? Like, were they receptive to this conversation? And how did you kind of navigate the beginning of that? I think the deeper you, I mean, it's such a broad concept um, and it's very layered, right? So to truly understand climate change and the different components of it is is a huge thing. Um, so I try to break it down, especially for the age group that I work with, which is middle school students. I try to break it down just just at the basics to begin. And then we get into more deeper concepts like tipping points um, and more specific like things and, and um, consequences of climate change. Um, mm. But I think it's interesting that being able to use tech as a component, um, not just for storytelling, but to be able to connect with other kids and other educators and classrooms truly uh, gives advocacy to kids that then they can begin to see um, that their ideas have merit, but not only that, but like this, this is how we're gonna solve climate change. So mm -hmm. I really try to um, approach it. Like, I think if it was a hopeless situation, um, I wouldn't be teaching this, you know, but there is still hope. And I think um, the power of being able to connect and to empathize with others um, through technology and breaking down those traditional barriers in education, that's how we're going to solve um, the climate change crisis. That is, uh, and I will continue to plug the empathy framework. I will nerd out about this forever and ever. But I think that's such a good reminder that 
empathy is it, it's got those levels of application. So it's connecting with the world at large, it's connecting with others, and it's also connecting with yourself. So I think that's another area that we can really highlight today about how do you start the conversation with students? You all are starting it right now because you are here, you're showing up, you're talking about it, you're working through your own you know, feelings. How do you feel about climate change? And that's exactly where you start. And then also with students in the classroom, really giving them the tools even before the conversation starts of being able to practice mindfulness. So when large feelings come up, they can go back to, let's say, um, you've practiced doing body scans in your classroom. That's like a daily activity that you implement. And when these larger feelings come up, you say, okay, hey, let's go to our tools that we've got in our toolbox, that body scan, let's take a look. Where, what are we feeling? Where are we feeling that? And so I think this is a, like all of this is such a good reminder that empathy is all of that. It's connecting with ourselves. It's connecting our students with themselves. It's connecting with each other. And then also that added level of connecting with the world at large, which has been made so much easier through technology, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go, we're, I'm watching our clock. Oh, I was going to say one more thing too about that. Like, you know, I think there's a tendency for climate change to be very discouraging mm -hmm. um, to talk about and begin to dive in. But I always try to give the example that the only um, real failure is non-action. So, mm -hmm. you know, as, as overwhelming as this can be and as scary as it can be by not acting, that is the only failure, truly. Mm-hmm. Mm Yep, that is That's such huge. an important reminder. Yeah. Um, and so our next question for today, before we dive into the details of the Earth Day Challenge, is really what can you do today to foster students' collective responsibility to the planet at large? Um, and again, I'm going to start with Amanda. You're next on my screen. Um, and so I see you first. How have you cultivated this collective responsibility to the planet in your classroom? Well, I think it kind of goes back to what I was saying. It's about action, right? How can we start small with small changes that we can all implement and do? Um, but also, how can we think broadly? How can we connect with other people innovatively and around the world globally to begin to think about, because climate change is not going to be solved by one person. It's going to be a collective action. Mm -hmm. But um, it has to, it, it, for kids, I think, to feel empowered, it starts small. Like, what can they do? What are individual actions that we can all take um, to collectively make a bigger difference? Um, you know, and I give the example, like, Turning the water off when you're brushing your teeth may seem like a small thing, um, but if everybody does that, then the the energy consumption that we're we're saving and the water and that globally over a period of time is going to make a big difference. So even though small actions seem small, um, they do make a big difference in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and as oh, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I, I wanted to chime in because I heard Amanda, so when we were on the last slide talking about how when you're approaching this conversation with kids, it's such a big thing, right? We see these big billboard posters about the big catastrophe. Um, and then again, you know, Lauren, you're talking about how that can be overwhelming, but once we're past that and we're starting to actually work with our students, how do we make that big problem something small so that we can see the connection between, you know, energy consumption and turning off the faucet? And it just reminded me that uh, of, of a graphic organizer that we have within Book Creator that's called a problem tree. And it's exactly for that, talking about big problems and how they sort of connect to the smaller problems. And then you have cause and effect. And it, I just wanted to chime in and throw that in there because we were looking for examples. Um, and that is that is a great example of, of thinking routines for students. Yeah, and I I love that these both like all of these um, ways to you know foster that collective responsibility can be supplemented and really added to by like getting outside. So not only like I think mm. when we think about technology and book creator, Empatico, all of these things, I think the the instinct is to think that we're using that inside, you know, and we're we're using that technology to mm. see a space outside of our immediate space, but also we can go outside of our four walls, right? That can be a place to start. Mm. You take students outside 
explore like what is something that they really enjoy about their environment and then having them think about okay why do you love that why is it important and then Mm -hmm. as Amanda mentioned in the previous question you know really looking into the science of all of that having the students understand why these things that they love why they're so important you know the I think what's coming to mind is I'm thinking about bees like somebody may really really love flowers and maybe they don't love bees that somebody might be me um but (laughs) (laughs) or almonds almonds too you know almonds yeah so we've got all these things that we know are good and so really understanding why these things are connected why these things and then seeing it touching it all of that and then also bringing in that connection to other communities and other parts of the world where you might um you might be on the same like latitude line or something like that and really understanding mm-hmm. how that looks differently in different parts of the world how that affect, affects climate in different parts of the world um so i think one thing one way to foster that collective responsibility that i love is just getting students outside you know touch touch ground touch touch the trees outside understand what that environment is outside right i love that so mindful too to just Mm -hmm. to bring that piece in i like that Mm -hmm. yeah i think another thing that we've seen uh really highlighted through in the empatico platform um and i'm sure david through book creator you've seen this in other spaces is uh highlighting positive action that's being taken so these you know tackling climate change as you mentioned david is a large, it's a large task. Uh, It can very quickly feel very overwhelming. Um, But as you mentioned, breaking it down into smaller pieces and then also highlighting people that are the same age as your students that are out there and taking action. Like, look, this is somebody that is the same age as you that is out there and doing something. What can we do? What's a small thing that we can do? And all of these small things add up. What's the, the phrase, the... The grain of sand. Uh, I, I'm, I can't remember that phrase. From one side to the other, for sure. And, you know, like this project, the Grow Green project, you know, the Earth Earth Month Challenge, this was all developed by students, my students. So, you know, uh, I think empowering them and giving them voice and advocacy over their own learning and implementing their ideas and showing that how powerful they really one person can be. Um and uh, I'm super excited to be able to share a little bit of this with everyone today, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually think that's a great segue um, into talking about what we're all here to talk about today, the Earth Day Challenge. And that graphic is not showing up as far as that. Is that, are you not seeing the Earth Day Challenge logo? No. Oh, um, uh, I apologize. It's really cute. You all will see it on the program page. (laughs) Um, But thank you, Amanda, for that transition. Uh, And such a important reminder is that this, this idea for this Earth Day challenge started with your students. You know, I think that is such a cool reminder and something for all of us to take back to our classrooms um, and encourage our students to, to think like, okay, what can we do? Um, so really, what is the Earth Day Challenge? Um, as we mentioned before, we Empatico, we at Empatico have teamed up with Amanda and Book Creator to host this challenge throughout the month of April. Um, students will learn about climate change. They will create artwork celebrating the planet, and they will become a part of a larger community that is dedicated to environmental sustainability and stewardship. Who can participate? This is for classrooms all over the world between the, uh, with students between the ages of five to 18. Um, and why should you participate? There are plenty of reasons. It could be connecting with other classrooms. It could be, you know, really exploring artwork through climate change. But at the end of the day, we really do urgently need to equip students with the skills to be empathetic problem solvers. And it's going to take a global collaborative effort to find climate solutions. Um, we're all going to have to work together. I'm going to move us into the activity portion of the Earth Day Challenge. So each week we will be providing suggested activities. But if there is another activity that you want to do with another classroom around climate change and climate action, go ahead. 
we really encourage, you know, this all began with ideas from students. And so we encourage you to use that inspiration, use that as inspiration um, and see what really resonates with your students. So earlier this week, if anybody in here is on our weekly newsletter, you would have seen that we shared the first two activities um, the, both of them are just to get you started talking about climate change with your students. We've got what is climate change and learning about climate change. What is climate, climate change is for younger students. Learning about climate change is for older students. Um, but both of them are just to get you and your students started talking about what is climate change. Then we've got two other activities um, that will be suggested next week and the week after that. And I might actually, uh, Amanda, if you wanna share a little bit about the Let's Talk About It and the Climate Action Calendar activities since these came from you and your students. So I'd love to hear a little bit from you. So I would say, um, you know, I just kind of want to, I guess, give a little context to some of this was we, you know, we've learned about climate change in my classroom and then it was like, okay, what can we do? What can we do right now in our community? What can we do in our school? What can we do globally? And and like the tree, the uh, problem solving tree, I forget what you called it, David, but breaking it down to the different components, like, um, for example, like, okay, what can we do in our community to make it more sustainable? Well, then we begin to look at the fact that kids within two miles of the school are not bused, um, but there's also not bike lanes. So how are these kids getting to school, are parents driving them? How can we advocate to city council to put more bike lanes in around our schools within two miles? So we even got as specific as that. Um, and then students brainstormed and they came up with this idea of like, how do we create an activity where people can begin to start the conversation about climate change, take action, but in a way that, again, is not overwhelming and is something that is small, it is doable, and it is an everyday thing. Um, so students develop this idea of like, let's talk about climate change, um, that most people have access to chalk. Um, there's no lack of pavement, at least... <laughs> here in Columbus, Ohio, in the United States. So how can we use our resources, again, to continue the conversation about climate change? Um, I think that's the point of entry and the beginning of um, problem solving for this on a, on a bigger scale. Um, and then as far as the other activities, so my students developed the climate action calendar um, and uh, there's an example, I believe, on the web page, but it breaks it down into 22 days of um, different challenges you could do each day from just one day, just one day, eliminate um, single use plastics. Not overwhelming, not super hard to do. And if everybody did that collectively, that has a huge impact. Um, but also it encourages people to look at what can we do individually to problem solve collectively. Um, so, um, we created this grow green gallery so everybody can kind of share, um, their artwork, but also artifacts of learning that happen in the classroom. Um, whether it is a chalk drawing, whether it's, um, an activity about writing or just even brainstorming ways that we can get involved in our local communities for climate action. Awesome. Thank you. And I will actually now walk us through the what the Earth Day Challenge space looks like on the platform and we'll get to see the Grow Green Gallery. Um, it is so tricky for me to say that. I am going to stumble across that every single time I attempt to say that. Um, but give me one second. Let me stop sharing this screen so that I can get us into the program page. Can everybody see my screen? Awesome. So with the Earth Day Challenge, um, if anybody joined our World Languages Challenge back in the month of February, we this is kind of similar in the way that we have created a closed community on the platform for you all to connect with other educators that are interested in connecting over climate change and taking climate action. Um, so in order to enter this program space, you'll log onto the platform um, and you will go to the community, you're going to click this community button up here and then click programs in that drop down menu. If you are not a part of any other community, then immediately it will just ask you for an access code. If you are a part of another community, you're going to scroll down to the bottom of that community space and it will ask you for the access code. 
to enter into the Earth Day Challenge space, the access code is going to be Mother Earth 2024 with a capital M and a capital E. Don't worry, we will send all of this information in a follow-up email um, and many more emails from me over the course of the next few weeks. So you do not need to write down the access code right now if you don't have a pen or paper handy. Um, we'll send it in a follow-up email. But once you enter that access code, the platform will automatically put you into this closed community space where at the top here, you will see other educators that are in, in this program that you can connect with. Um, you'll see three come up there. If you're looking to, let's say, for example, you're looking to connect with somebody in another country. Um, I'm currently in the United States, and I see that all three of these classrooms that the platform is suggesting to me are in the United States. You can just go ahead and click view more educators, and it'll give you different suggestions. Um, this is our staging uh, website, and so it's <laughs> all of our demo accounts in here uh, that happen to be in the United States, but it will give you recommendations for other educators that are also in the program. So you can connect with those educators, just click that connect button, you'll see the screen pop up on the right hand side of the screen and you can send them a message, say hello, give them a little bit of information about your students, maybe you're working with third graders um, and you're looking to connect next week or you're looking to connect on April 22nd for Earth Day, let them know and then you're going to go and send that request off to them and wait to hear back from them. Then as you scroll down a little bit in this community space, you'll see all the activities for the Earth Day Challenge. All these suggested activities are embedded here in this space. So the ones we talked about, what is climate change and learn about climate change are right there. And then we've got the new activities that were developed specifically for the Earth Day Challenge by Amanda and her students. The Let's Talk About It activity and the Climate Action Calendar. I want to make a note that the, and Amanda just mentioned this, the Let's Talk About It and the Climate Action Calendar activity, both of them have the opportunity to add to the Grow Green Gallery, our book creator gallery, um, which if you scroll down in the community space a little bit more, you see that Grow Green Gallery embedded right here in the program, in this Earth Day Challenge program space. So you and your students can go through and explore the artwork from other classrooms all over the world. You just click here, you open it up, and you get to see their artwork. Maybe another classroom has included a couple, maybe a few pieces of artwork into their books. I think this one, we've just got one piece of artwork. So you could explore the gallery and the library that way with your students. Um, I also want to make one more note about that Grow Green Gallery. So if you open up the Let's Talk About It activity or the Climate Action Calendar activity, we're going to open up Let's Talk About It for right now. Um, very similar to all of our other activities, you'll see an overview of that activity there and the partners that we worked with to develop these activities. One special thing that you will see here is Hey, David, um, is the gallery portion of this activity. So this is the portion where once your student, your students have created their artwork, um, which that's all listed in the instructions, once your students have created their artwork, then you're going to put all their artwork together into a book creator book. And you're going to make sure that there is no personally identifying information for your students in that book, because this is going into a public space. Um, so you're going to put their artwork into a book creator book. Once you have that book creator book assembled, then you are going to submit it to us, to the Empatico team, through this Google form right here. It links to that Google form right here in the gallery section of the activity space. You're going to submit the link to your book creator book. A member of our team will just review it to make sure that there's no personally identifiable information. And then we will post that your book, your students' artwork to the Grow Green Gallery within one business day, um, usually faster, but we cannot make any promises, uh, but within one business day. And it's as easy as that. If anybody has not used Book Creator before, um, Amanda and David have been super, super helpful in creating this no, video Patrick, here <laughs> that links that here. We've got a video um, that links here. It's created specifically for the Earth Day Challenge. Um, so thank you, Amanda and David, 
Um, but this is one thing that we're really, really excited about with the Earth Day Challenge is the ability to have you all with your students create your books and then share them to the larger Grow Green Gallery. So at any point throughout the course of the next month or after that, you and your students can go back to this Grow Green Gallery, look and see. Remember we talked about, you know, one way to foster that collective responsibility is to see what other people are doing. This is a great way to continue fostering that collective responsibility throughout this month. And afterwards, you can come back to this Grow Green Gallery. Grow, grow Green Gallery. It's so hard. Uh, <laughs> you can continue to come back to the Grow Green Gallery and explore that with your students and really see what other students are doing in other parts of the world. Um, before we move on from this portion, I just want to say, Amanda or David, do you have anything to add about the book creator portion or about the community space as a whole? Amanda? Yeah, um, I would say, you know, one of the big things I always tell my students is innovation rarely happens in isolation. Um, so it is important that when we are having conversations about climate action, that we are looking at how do we share our ideas um, so that it, it, you know, it's not going to be, again, an individual that's taking, you know, that's going to solve this bigger problem. Um, and I think the beauty of this, this book creator library is that it gives kids the ability to be able to share and learn and grow from each other. Um, and again, to begin to innovate collectively. Um, and I think too, I want to add that with this gallery, it doesn't have to just be art. Um, a lot of times, it, you know, we're looking for artifacts of learning. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we'll do brainstorming on post-it notes or we'll do um, just different thinking routines. Those are also, um, please, you know, add those as well, because I think that also guides the conversation and collective um, innovation globally. Thank you. Yeah, I would just add to that. Um, we know we've been around since 2011. We've heard this time and time again. Anytime you tell your students that the audience for their work will be the rest of the world or a larger audience outside their classroom, they pour so much more energy and effort into what they're doing and they care. Um, and so, yeah, by, by leading with the idea that their art is going to be displayed on a global stage um, really sets the tone, I think. Uh, that we want them to have for this. So I'm really happy that this was included. Awesome. Thank you both. I am going to stop sharing and hop us back to the slide deck. One second. So how can you all get started today? So the first thing that you can do is you can join the Earth Day Challenge community on the Empatico platform. As we mentioned, the program code is Mother Earth 2024 with a capital M, a capital E, and I promise we will send another email after today's webinar and you will get another email next week with this program code. You will get a few more emails with this program code, but that's the first thing that you can do. Just join the community. Then you could also start the conversation with your students, right? We've got those beginning activities, what is climate change and learning about climate change. But if there's another way that you wanna start this conversation with your students, or maybe you have already started this conversation with your students and you wanna keep it going, at the end of the day, you know your students best. And so really just engage that conversation and keep it going, whatever that looks like for your classroom. Another way that you can get started is to connect with another classroom. There in the community, there are already a lot of other classrooms that are looking to connect um, and they are located all over the world. So you can either connect with another classroom through a virtual exchange or go ahead and start exploring that Grow Green Gallery with your students and maybe submit uh, an artifact of learning to that Google form that we've got there. Um, and then we will post it and you'll get to see your students' artwork there in the Grow Green Gallery within one business day. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what just happened. Oh, I accidentally clicked a link. I apologize. Um, 
So for here, we've got about 15 minutes left. And at this point now, we were thinking that we might have you all go off into breakout rooms, depending on um, the age of your students, so that you can start connecting with another classroom right away, with another educator right away. Um, so I'm going to start breakout rooms, or I'm going to open up some breakout rooms. We'll give you about 10 minutes. We recommend that you go into that space, say hello, share your name, share where you are calling from. Um, and share something that you really enjoy about your environment. And then maybe if you have... Welcome back. I think, I think we are all back now. Uh, I'm almost positive. I think so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but welcome back. Um, we just wanted to finish up with a few minutes. If anyone has any questions, we are happy to answer any questions that you've got, whether it be about Empatico, about the Earth Day Challenge, about Book Creator, we are here and happy to answer any questions that you have. So feel free to either write a question in the chat if you've got it or unmute yourself and ask away. Uh, is Book Creator is free or we need a membership to work with our students? Great question. Uh, we have a free version of our application online at app.bookcreator.com. Um, you and your students can create up to 40 books on the free version. Um, also, as part of this project, we offered a uh, coupon code uh, for Book Creator for three months. It'll, it'll last you to the end of the school year, the end of the U.S. school year. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yes, uh, Book Creator has a, a free version. And we also want to make sure that any teacher that are working on the Grow Green Gallery um, or any of this Empatico project has access to that. So. Um, I know it's in there somewhere. I think it's in the instructions. If it's not, we'll make sure that it gets put in there as well. Uh, thank, thank you so much. I would love to have that uh, coupon versions because uh, I teach kindergarten to eighth grade, all grades computer science. So I kind of like had 350 students. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you we need to get that. you upgraded. Yeah. yeah, we need to get you upgraded Thanks. for okay. sure. I will be sure to include that in an email. <laughs> yeah. Well, in many an uh, emails. <laughs> quite apropos. Yes. Hello, good evening. Hi. This is Olawale from Lagos, Nigeria. Hey. Yes. Okay, as regards the book creator, uh, like in my school, my children are familiar, they use the book creator. So now, that means all their projects will be in a single book, all of them put together. Hello? So you you have all your students' different projects and you want to put them all into one book together? Is that what I'm understanding? No, no, no. I said as regards this um, F challenge that we're talking about here. So after they've done it, so all of them will be in a single book. Or uh, yes. be individual. Oh, okay. Yeah, it would be great if you if you compiled all your students' work into one book and then submitted that book. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So mm -hmm. that means their names will be written on each. Or how do we go about it? To the, or just everything will just represent the school without maybe name attached to each project. In that yeah. single okay. book, we the name be attached to it or just leave it like that, just as a school. I think, Amanda, do you want to take that? I think it's kind of... Yeah. Um, and so I've had my students, they all create whatever it is that they're creating. 
um, whether it's a comic, whether it's a chalk art, um, they can all individually access a uh, book creator and then they can create um, their own, whatever, whatever the thing is. And then you as a teacher can combine them into a book. I think that's what you're asking. So yes. that helps them. Yeah. That, then they all can create their own thing in their own time. Um, but then okay. you as the teacher can combine them into one book. It's pretty easy to wow. do. Okay. Okay. I understand. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. And the video that we, that Lauren talked about that Amanda and I created talks exactly about how to do just that. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And I'll just remind that that video is located in. So when you go into the activities, when you go into um, either the let's talk about it or the climate action calendar activity under the gallery tab, which is where you will see the larger grow green gallery, um, and the instructions there are listed, and that's where you'll find that that video. Okay, so another question. Is, is there any deadline? Because right now we are on holiday, so my children haven't resumed. Mm -hmm. So we are on yeah, holiday now, so I want to know what the time frame. So we'll be celebrating all month long. Um, and as we mentioned, the activities for each week are suggested activities for that week. Um, but you can contribute all month long. And then, you know, if you build a connection with another classroom throughout this month, you can keep that connection going. So there's no real deadline, um, although the Earth Day Challenge is officially just going for the month of April. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions? All right. If there are no more questions, um, then I just want to thank everyone for joining us today, um, but also thank you, David and Amanda. And Amanda, thank you to your students as well. This all started with you and their ideas. So thank you for starting that conversation to begin with, with them. Um, we're really, really excited to see all, all the artifacts of learning in the Grow Green Gallery throughout this month and see all the different connections that happen all over the world discussing climate change. So thank you, everyone. You will get an email today from me with everything that we discussed today with the slides, with the recording, um, and then all the details, the program code, the book creator discount code, all that stuff. Thank you so much for having me, Lauren. This is wonderful. Yeah, this is fun. Thank you for joining. I'm going to stop recording.